So let's begin with today's topic. Now, uh, in this picture, you are seeing two gentlemen. One on your uh, left is a typical old uh, grandpa who's crouched using a walking stick to walk. And on your right, you've got a similar aged guy, but he's looking completely different. He is on a cycle. Let me tell you, he's my teacher. And uh, this is a picture when he just cycled from Bombay to Alibag nonstop. So the question remains as who do you want to be in today's generation? Would you want to be like the old duck in the left or would you want to be an active, fit old guy? So uh, things in today's generation are changing. People are wanting more and more to do with their lives. Things are changing from palliative treatment to preventive treatment. Now, nobody is talking about how to cure cancer. People are like right now thinking, how do we avoid cancer altogether? Same way, life-saving procedures are reducing and right now more and more procedures towards changing the quality of life uh, is happening. So the people's perspective is changing. So what is the difference between uh, the previous and the old? To, it's, it's not the age because both are of the same age. And what's, what's the real difference? Uh, is, it, is it the gender? Is it uh, uh, to do with their genetics? Not really. The main difference uh, between the two is the quality of their bone and their muscles which is somewhat interlinked and that is what I'm going to talk to you about. But before going to the topic, basic understanding of how the bone works is important. So uh, as an analogy, a bone, our uh, bony cycle is just like a building under construction. There's constant generation, regeneration, something new, something subtracted, something added that keeps going on. So let us, let us have a cross section of bone. So if you cut open a spine or a bone, this is how it is going to look. It is typically made up of columns, uh, beams and mineral. So it technically it's something like how your wall is. It has got columns, it's got beams and it's got cement which is put inside. So that's how a normal structure of our bone is. You must have heard about condition called as osteomalacia. Now, osteomalacia is typically where the quality of bone is going to reduce, which means what is going to happen is that the structure of bone is going to remain the same, but the, the calcium inside starts going away, which means it is similar to you having a wall wherein you have laid in the bricks, but you have not put in good amount of cement. So basically the yellowish bit went away and that is basically what osteomalacia or demineralization of the bone is. Osteoporosis on an other hand is a completely different condition. Osteoporosis technically is a disease of the bone wherein what happens is there is just not the loss of mineral but you lose the lattice itself which means it's not just that you have forgotten to put good amount of cement in the wall you have also not put enough amount of brick. So on the left hand side you can see a representative structure of the bone wherein you can see the lattice or the structure of the bone which is filled in with all these black spots which is the calcium or the cement. Whereas on the right is an osteoporotic bone where you see that both the structure and the cement have reduced. So what essentially it does, it diseases the bone and it makes it liable for fragility fracture or basically it makes it like something like a biscuit where you do this and it is going to break. So basically what happens in osteoporosis is there is loss of bony lattice, which means there is change in the quality of bone altogether. On the left, you have got a normal bone. And on the right, you see a bone of a 75-year-old lady with osteoporosis where you don't have the structure, neither you've got the uh, calcium inside. Okay. So that's basically what osteoporosis is. Eventually what happens is whenever pressure starts coming, these bones which are structurally weak starts collapsing. And that is basically called as insufficiency fracture. Insufficiency fracture are fractures that are happening in bones which are diseased either because of either osteoporosis or it could be because of some other pathology. <coughs> the dictum is if a person is falling down from a standing height, that is called as trivial trauma according to the WHO definition and, and a person who sustains fracture with a trivial trauma is most likely because of an osteoporotic fracture. All right. So let's discuss a bit more about this, uh, uh, about your, uh, about osteoporosis. And I'm going to throw in 
uh, a little bit on i am going to touch how to treat osteoporosis now the question might come in as why are we talking about osteoporosis because a lot of times you don't understand that the results of a treatment depends upon a lot of things the two important things where the treatment depends upon is the quality of the bones and the quality of the muscles when the quality of bone becomes bad that is the condition called as osteoporosis whenever a person gets osteoporosis the muscles also becomes weak and this condition is called as sarcopenia so osteoporosis and sarcopenia come hand in hand and when we are treating uh, when we are treating any orthopedic problem you need both qualities to be good now next question comes as why am i talking on osteoporosis see the important bit is that uh, osteoporosis first is seen by those people uh, who are treating the problems arising out of it and the biggest brunt of osteoporosis happens in the spine followed by the wrist and the hip so these are the doctors who are in direct touch with these patients and uh, hence we are the ones who are talking about osteoporosis so let's uh, uh, just one second huh? kindly refrain from annotating so now many things can actually interfere the development uh, of your bone and uh, influence how the quality of your bone or skeleton is going to be okay it could be genetic abnormalities it could be nutritional deficiencies it could be hormonal disorders these are the things that causes some kind of bone problem so some can be tall some can be short some can be fat thin you got people who don't have good uh, bony development or who have got deficiency of bone production like osteogenesis imperfecta and such congenital conditions and there are other conditions like uh, thyroid uh, deficiencies which indirectly affect the quality of your skeleton but the most important and the most commonest bone disease is osteoporosis so just to give you an idea about how bad osteoporosis is hitting us worldwide and this is facts coming from this literature worldwide osteoporosis causes more than 8.5 8.9 million fractures annually so technically there is one osteoporotic fracture every 3 seconds technically that's more than the speed with which the corona is spreading osteoporosis is affected to uh, estimated to affect around 200 million women worldwide approximately 1/10 of the women uh, above the age of 80 uh, above the age of 60 one fifth above the age of 70 and two fifths above the age of 80 or more than half of the age above the age of 90 are going to be osteoporotic now why women is because overall osteoporosis te uh, tends to hit women maximum now women have got that extra hormone called as estrogen which uh, is beneficial in a lot, lot of ways it uh, uh, prevents them from cardiac problems it keeps the bone healthy but as soon as they hit menopause there's a sudden dip in your estrogen level that's why that influences the bone quality and hence uh, it is the women who are hit with osteoporosis fastest uh, there's also other uh, environmental factors which are uh, associated with it which we'll talk about yeah now in the year uh, overall around 75 million people in us U, uh, europe and japan in total are affected by osteoporosis in the year 2000 and that's like 20 years back when all of this was happened there was an estimated 9 million new osteoporotic fractures europe and america account for around 51% of all these fractures whereas the remaining happen in the western uh, uh, west pacific and the southeast asian re region uh, which means that osteoporosis is as important as diabetes and blood can uh, and breast cancer and blood pressure so it's not something that we can ignore and it's coming on our face every day since the activities are increasing uh in overall one in three women over the age of 50 will experience osteoporotic fracture and one in five men are going to get that so a lot of us who are right now discussing on this and hearing all this at some stage in our life are going to get osteoporotic fracture overall 61% of osteoporotic fractures occur in women with a female to male ratio of 1 is to 1.6 uh around 75% of fracture occurs among 65% uh, year group or more a 10% of bone mass in the vertebrae can double the risk of vertebral fracture 
so uh, which means that if your bone quality just deteriorates by 10% you're at double the risk of developing a fracture it is projected that about 50% of all osteoporotic hip fractures will be in asia by the age of 2050 in a study amongst indian women age 30 to 60 from low income group bmd reported uh, that as compared to the developed country there is higher prevalence uh, prevalence of osteopenia and osteoporosis in our uh, country which means that indians are at a higher risk of developing osteopenia and osteoporosis in 2010 an uh, international report in the asian audit by international osteoporosis foundation had predicted that india would have approximately 36 million osteoporosis patients by 2013 but more serious was the fact that indian are prone to fractures at a much younger age than their western counterpart uh, the endocrinologist dr amrish mittal who was a man who actually got the first bone density machine in india predicted uh, that 50 percent of the world's fracture were expected to occur in this region by 2050 the idea of throwing all these statistics on you is basically to prime you how much of a serious problem osteoporosis is going to be and all of us are at that position where we can identify and treat osteoporosis quickly and effectively again eventually towards the end of the lecture you'll you'll realize how important it is to follow correct protocols in treating osteoporosis because these patients before going to the endocrinologist before going to the physician are going to come to you and me so it's up to us to identify them. Yeah. Now, the combined lifetime risk of hip, forearm, and vertebral fractures coming to a clinical uh, clinical attention is around forty percent, as good as a cardiovascular disease. Uh, also, osteoporosis is takes a major economic and personal financial burden. Because whenever you get osteoporosis, overall your productivity goes down. If you land up with osteoporotic fracture, that's an added expense and that hits the entire family. So a uh, lot of places, especially now, even in our country where public health is given importance, they look at how much a disease is going to cause problem to the community. And essentially the disability due to osteoporosis is greater than that is caused by cancers or is as good as any other disease such as rheumatoid arthritis, asthma and high blood pressure. Now you know about all these things. So you, know, you should know about osteoporosis also. In women around 45 years of age, osteoporosis accounts for more days spent in the hospital than many other diseases, including diabetes, myocardial heart attacks and breast cancer. It is estimated that residual lifetime risk of a person experiencing an osteoporotic fracture in men over the age of 50 is up to 27 uh, percent which is higher than the risk of developing prostate cancer and prostate cancer is one of the biggest screening campaign that happens in men so uh, if you are treating blood pressure if you're treating diabetes if you're treating heart problem you have to treat osteoporosis you don't li leave it as a secondary disease not giving them a lot of importance all right so Let's say these are the commonest things that we hear about osteoporosis from I, even sometimes we think or our patients talk about it that dog, I'm taking calcium. I'm not going to get osteoporosis or some person comes and says that dog do something. My knee has uh, got osteoporosis. So here are some facts about osteoporosis. One osteoporosis is not calcium deficiency. Okay. Calcium is not the treatment of osteoporosis. Remember what I told you about the bone mineral and the bone mass. So again, just recapping, imagine you have a wall. A wall has got bricks inside and on bricks you are putting cement. So a wall with good amount of bricks and good amount of cement is a normal bone. You remove the cement from that and your bone mineral goes down and that is uh, osteopenia or osteomalacia where the quality of your bone is, uh, the, the calcium content of your bone is going down but the structure of the bone is still the same condition where apart from the cement you have also removed some bricks that is the condition where you get osteoporosis because then how much ever cement you are going to put if there is no bricks the cement is just going to wash away similarly how much ever calcium you load in a person with osteoporosis it's not going to have any value because the calcium is just going to get washed away second osteoporosis is a generalized disease 
it is not like you have osteoporosis in the wrist or you got osteoporosis in the spine it is affecting all the bones of your body the fractured bone is just where you can actually see that disease with your eyes means the disease has caused a problem and you are identifying it does not mean that your uh, the the bone of your skull is normal even that has got gotten weak so it's a generalized condition again the last bit is osteoporosis has got no cure that is why it is very important that you identify it early and prevent it because prevention is the only true treatment of osteoporosis okay that is why early diagnosis is the most important step in treating osteoporosis we guys are at the position where we can identify counsel screen and test the patients for osteoporosis and if detected treat them aggressively okay yeah just give me a second huh? so how do we diagnose or osteoporosis early so here what you have to do is clinically identify the patients who are at risk to develop osteoporosis or someone who's complaining of these generalized aches and pain generalized feeling of tiredness doctor idhar bhi dukhta hai idhar bhi dukhta hai kamar bhi dukhta hai peet bhi dukhta hai taakat nahi rehta hai thakavat lagti hai these are the patients who are uh, giving the history suggestive of a generalized bony problem or you identify those patients who are at risk so patients who are taking there is a big chart but in general patients who are taking steroids for a long term patients who are fat not really uh, exercising a lot uh, are having a very sedentary lifestyle uh, has had history of fractures are taking certain medicines which are prone to cause osteoporosis so these are the patients clinically these patients typically present with progressing kyphosis or generalized hunching you will see that they have got muscles which are flabby and overall the posture is ekdam weak so these these are the patients that you look at them and then you start thinking that okay maybe this patient has got osteoporosis so a lot of patients who you all are treating for back pain who are not getting better in spite of everything that you do maybe you have just missed out the fact that the patient is purely osteoporotic which means the patient has got sarcopenia also which means that the bones and muscles are weak which means how much ever you treat them the muscles are never going to uh, get strong and their back pain will never go away so this could be that one missing link in your treatment that is why uh, you identify the patients uh, who are at risk for osteoporosis what do you do then once you know that okay chalo these are the risk factors then you need to have some objectivity just because i said that the patient has got osteoporosis or some x ray saying osteoporosis does that mean that the patient has osteoporosis not really so there are just two investigations which are there which have also recently come up and we are looking at it is dexa scan and quantitative ct scan so these are the two investigations which objectively can tell you if the patient is osteoporotic or not yeah uh just to give you an idea of how much the osteoporosis gets unrecognized this is a series of patients so what what uh, in this study it was done that around 930 women who are above 60 uh who were hospitalized for other causes other than spine related back pain yeah they uh, usually get chest x ray done as protocol when they get admitted and on seeing the chest x ray there were around 130 odd patients who already had fractures and there were 52% patients who already had some kind of uh, some some kind of mention of osteoporosis which means up to more than 50% of people are roaming around without being recognized as patients of osteoporosis which means that incidentally when you are doing an x ray you suddenly see are the patient has got a very poor bone quality so a lot of times even when we uh, when we get an x ray done for some other thing we see and we tell the patient yeah everything is fine but i also see that your bone quality is bad so that is why you should have a very high index of suspicion and you should have your criteria set as to which patients you are going to investigate for osteoporosis now in my practice what i usually sorry just one second so in my practice usually every patient who is above the age of 50 females and every patient who is above the age of 60 male coming to me i counsel them and i tell them to get a bone density report done because it's my duty to educate people and try to pick up those patients 
so i would also encourage you all to do that every patient above 50 who are females and 60 who are males should be at least screened once for uh, osteoporosis so you just tell them to get the bone density done now who are those as at risk subjects i just told you about this there's a list of uh, conditions where osteoporosis are uh, seen a uh, lot of but for you it's just very simple just identify those two patients or patients with generalized aches and pains or who are kyphosis sometimes the patients might also give you a very funny history that i feel my mom's height is reducing okay you might laugh at that but that actually happens people who have osteoporotic fractures slowly and steadily become kyphotic so slowly their height actually starts decreasing till overtly you can see kyphosis and then the people know that they have started bending so these are the histories that you have to look for once you have identified those at risk patients you send them for a bone density scan so bone density is basically a dual energy x ray absorbatory absorbimetry scan which means dexa scan it's a simple easily available relatively cheap test and it's not something where you put the patient through a tube which means it's relatively open so it does not cause claustrophobia uh, it is a very good screening test and it can also help in uh, determining the response to treatment yeah sorry just a sec so here once you do the dexa scan what do we do is we get two values one is the t score and z score so let's say they have done a bone density of me and they have found some value that value they are going to compare with normal healthy subjects and they will tell how bad is my bone as compared to the normal healthy subjects okay z score on the other hand will measure my bone quality with someone who they consider normal of my own age so technically and so these are the technical aspect but practically it is the t score that we are looking at because we want to compare ourselves with the normal healthy okay so you get a t score of minus 2.5 which means that as compared to someone who is normal my bone is minus 2.5 times bad so technically when your t score is less than minus 1.5 you are considered to be osteopenic and when it becomes less than minus 2.5 then you are considered to be osteoporotic okay but there is a problem with osteoporosis one, uh, problem with bone density one is that it's not like you start treating osteoporosis immediately there's going to be a change in your bone density so it's going to take time hence you are not able to immediately monitor if your treatment is working correctly or not that is first flaw the second flaw is bone density basically is rays which are passed through the bones and they are collected and the quality of the bone is determined in a severely degenerative spine what happens is there is a lot of movement that is happening that causes osteophyte formation if there is severe degeneration severe osteophyte formation which means there is a lot of new bone formation so although the patient might be severely osteoporotic your bone density will come normal hence when you do bone density you just don't screen the spine you see three places which are affected the maximum one is the spine one is the hip and one is the wrist there is no role of full body dexa these three areas are good enough if suppose a patient has been operated at a particular area that area you have to uh, you have to just map you don't uh, consider that area whatever the reports are okay and if you have got a very degenerative spine so a 80 year old person showing t score of 1 is something abnormal there you see the x ray and if you see that there is severe degeneration don't look at the spine you look at the wrist and you'll realize the wrist is minus 4.5 okay so that is the second uh, problem now the other thing is that not necessary uh, an increase like increase in bmd may not be an adequate surrogate marker of e efficacy of all treatment which means that even if your bone density quality is increasing it is not uh, just one second yeah so you are not really sure is how much it is going to translate as a practical uh, relief to a patient which means your bone density might improve from minus 2 point minus 4.5 to minus 2.5 or minus 2 but that does not guarantee that he will not have fracture so these are the fallacies of the investigations for bone density 
so what else there is another much more specific and better investigation uh, for uh, identifying bone density and that's qualitative ct which means you do a ct scan of the spine and you actually study the sections and see how much is actual bone density so it will give you an accurate uh, idea about the quality of bone so that's one of a, that's that's a very specific test but the issue is that till now we don't know what is normal which means if a qct says that there is 30% bone density what does that mean is it normal is it low it is high so we don't still have the baselines yet because there are lot of ethical problems in doing those studies unnecessarily telling the normal people to undergo ct scan so that's still in progress so as of now the best possible test that you have to identify and uh, evaluate and eventually monitor the treatment of osteoporosis is bone density okay whenever you ask a person to do a bone density ask them to do it after stopping all calcium supplements for at least 4 days okay and tell them that you need the bone density level at the hip at the spine and at the wrist area all right so just before we start with the treatment i have one urgent thing that i have to look at sorry uh, some urgent messages yeah so now once we know what they have identified once we have uh, quantified everything now we need to treat osteoporosis so the and as i told you osteoporosis is a disease of the bone which means that it is a medical problem which means it has to be treated with medicines all right so the different treatment modalities are hormone uh, replacement therapy then you have got raloxifene calcitonin bisphosphonates there are newer medicines which are there there are certain hormonal therapy like parath hormones and uh, strontium so these are all the treatments that you have out of this hormone replacement therapy and raloxifene and strontium that has reduced uh, or that has gone into disrepute because when we started identifying the pros and cons of this versus that we realized that the side effects of all those therapy was way more than the effects of those therapy that's why they went into disrepute and today the three medicines which are used to treat osteoporosis are calcitonin you've got parath hormone analogs and you have got uh, 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 denosumab yeah not bisphosphonates that is the main difference which also i want to understand so uh, tell you guys so a lot of people say that i have been taking gemfos or i have been taking this medicine for so long so i have been treating osteoporosis well that's not a fact every medicine has a different way by which it acts on the body so the first treatment which came into uh, the first treatment which came became popular and went into disrepute was hormone replacement therapy because they started seeing that lot of cancers Uh, started worsening uh, or started uh, the incidence of cancer started increasing in people in females who were taking hormone replacement therapy somewhere to do with the fact that uh, the chances of breast cancer before 50 and after 50 varies because mainly uh, it has to do something with the estrogen hormone similarly when you are giving hormones to a patient you uh, are bound to have side effects and one of the side effect was cancers that's why it went into disrepute uh on the other hand the things that we are using now are nasal sprays which is one of the first and the easiest treatment it is essentially a calcitonin nasal spray which basically acts by inhibiting osteoclastic activity and it has some action on the osteoblast which means that it dem it demonstrate new bone formation effect due to direct anabolic action also it has got a painkiller somewhat of a painkiller uh, action means analgesic action so what does this really mean now let's consider a bone if you have got this bone you have got osteoclasts which are there which will come and which will eat away the bone and take the calcium and throw it into the blood you have got osteoblasts which will take the calcium and reform the bone okay so this is why the bone is constantly undergoing a cyclical change that's like a building under construction that is why 
when you use calcitonin in nasal spray, it has action on osteoclasts, which means it will stop the uh, uh, body cells to remove calcium from the bone and it will stimulate the osteoblasts to deposit more and more calcium. Now the question comes as to why does the body want to do something like this? So calcium per se is very important for natural functioning of all of our cells, which means if your calcium in your blood goes down, your cells are going to start acting haywire. And one of the effects that will happen is you will end up getting a heart attack. That is why body has to primarily maintain the blood calcium level as normal. That is why a lot of times when people say, I don't have osteoporosis, my blood calcium is normal. The blood calcium is always going to be normal. That is the job of the body. That is why when you take in less of calcium, what happens is the body is taking away all the calcium from your uh, bones and the, co and the quality of your bone starts depleting. That's why throughout life after 50, you need to put a patient on a basic calcium supplement so that at least you are artificially giving calcium and keeping the blood calcium level all right so that at least the bones don't get destroyed. So calcium after 50 is not to treat osteoporosis, but is to prevent osteoporosis. Okay. Next. So primarily it is used in patients who are symptomatic patients with osteoporosis. Why? Because of the third property that it also has a pain killing effect, which means uh, a patient who has got osteoporosis and has a fracture or has bony pains, you give them, it really helps reduce their pain. And it also given in young patients. So nowadays we are also seeing young patients with low bone density value. Uh, so in young patients, it really helps a lot. And of course, has a painkiller effect. The it, it has a quick action. It is given through your nose. And uh, the only problem is that you cannot give it more than two months because after two months, it develops an antibody to, uh, to the, so basically what is this calcitonin? It is basically an artificial animal derivative that you're putting in your body and it is stimulating your bone production. Your uh, body develops antibodies to it. And at some stage it stops working. That's why you give it only for two months. Yeah. The other is bisphosphonate. So as I told you, the treatment of osteoporosis is only three. There's calcitonin, you've got dinosumab, and you've got teriparatide. But the most commonest treatment of osteoporosis given all around is bisphosphonate. Now, bisphosphonates are basically allantronate, residronate. In a trade name, it is called as Fosavans or Gemphos and all Hydrophos, all these things. Yeah. But they are not to treat osteoporosis. They are medicines to prevent osteoporosis. So its action is not to stimulate bone deposition. It only inhibits the osteoclasses, which means the osteoclasts or those people who are removing the calcium from the bone, bisphosphonate is going to go and stop them. So in a normal bone, when you give bisphosphonate, then it will prevent it from becoming osteoporotic or it will delay the spread of uh, delay the uh, delay the time by which the patient will really become osteoporotic but it will not reverse the process understood that is why up till now nobody bothered with osteoporosis is because up till now the only treatment stopped here and that is this phosphonate and if you don't have a treatment for a particular condition then what's the point in treating that or what's the point in even talking about it right so if suppose you don't have treatment, that is why our previous generation, so our great grandparents or our grandparents, if you see are all crooked like this is because when they were growing up, there was no treat, treatment. We are in the era where we can identify and treat osteoporosis. So up till now, we just discussed on identification and preventing osteoporosis, right? The actual treatment is reversing osteoporosis, which now for the past 10 years we have started and now it's become safe. So that I'll talk to you a little bit in detail. But bisphosphonates, you all need to know about because that's the first line drug. And every patient who becomes osteopenic, which means every patient who on DEXA shows minus 1.1 or worse should be started on bisphosphonate because it is one, it is effective. It is compliant. It is not expensive. It is safe, except that there is just one problem and it causes a lot of gastritis. So every patient who we advise bisphosphonate is supposed to be told that you take it once a week in the morning 
and you take it on an empty stomach with cold milk or cold water and at least one hour don't lie down otherwise you'll get a lot of gastritis okay so that's the first one it it's a good start up treatment in uh, osteoporosis especially the post menopausal women uh, who uh, so a lot of gynecs just start this for their patients as a preventive treatment it works well till the bone stock is not very low uh, essentially and uh, there are certain conditions like i don't want to confuse you but there are certain conditions where there is a very acu acute bone loss uh, those patients this phosphonate is going to help you a lot so the, also most of the studies that were done was done on the weekly dosage of bisphosphonate so don't get carried away and try to give one injection a year or once a month injection all the studies have happened at the weekly dose and that's the most effective and the most safe way of giving it and that's called as alendronate okay trade main trade name is gem gem for 70 mg or fosavan 70 mg okay uh these are the advantages of bisphosphonate is effective widely applicable good compliant safe and relatively cheaper okay what about patients who have already got osteoporosis which means their bone quality is already bad the workers have come and taken away the brick over there and now you are in a position to put in cement but what how to regenerate that right how, how to change and get the previous structure of the bone so that the calcium can get absorbed correctly back that happens by two medicines and that is teriparatide and denosumab so this is the major change that has happened over the past 10 years uh, that is that has made us capable of treating osteoporosis right so teriparatide or pth in regular dose causes bone resorption okay which means you there are certain conditions like brown tu brown tumors which secretes pth which causes bone to be resolved which means it worsens the osteoporosis but if suppose we give it in a smaller dose and in a pulsated dose which means single small dose at a regular interval which means every day regularly for one year ideally for two years will stimulate bone production and that this is the only drug which can reverse and cause osteogenesis okay so how is it different from bisphosphonate just conceptually to understand is if you have a normal bone that bone in osteoporosis gets resolved when you treat that patient with bisphosphonate what it does it it prevents the further loss of bone but it is not going to change your quality of the bone whereas if you treat the same patient with the help of teriparatide what it does it builds up the quality of the bone one and then the calcium deposits on that and overall the end result is a very strong bone so that is basically the main difference between preventing and treating osteoporosis i hope i am clear as much as i could help you out with right there are other drugs also so now teriparatide is a very safe medicine it is similar to insulin which you take every day it comes as a pen vial which you have to inject okay uh these medicines range from 3 to 4000 to around 20000 a month so it is expensive and there's a great variation now great variation is because all the studies have been done on a uh, on the drug uh, on the by a company called as elilili and the trade name is fortio okay and then you have got indian companies which have uh, you know copied it and made it into their own versions all right it is not it is not the drug or the company that different the problem is the effectiveness of the treatment depends upon cold chain so this is actually a hormonal treatment which means right from the production till the patient ejects it it has to be maintained at a particular temperature all right so uh, not all companies are uh, you know compliant with the norms that is why some drugs some injections although they are very cheap okay uh you don't get the results that's why we always advise that if you are affording then you go for the original molecule because as clinician we have visually seen a gross difference between the result of indian and the imported ones all right so uh, here it is important to stick with the original molecule yes of course if the original molecule uh, if they are not affording then you better give them the indian molecule and make sure it's of a reputed company now why so much fussiness is because there is a time frame 
you cannot give this medicine for more than two years all right which means you start taking this medicine you can take only uh, a total of two years course beyond that it is not safe to take this medicine that is why you don't want to mess with it you want to give the best quality also the best effect is seen if you take this medicine every day for two years i usually give it for one year and reassess the effectiveness of treatment but the ideal protocol is you give it straight for uh, two years and then once the bone quality is build up and the quality is good then you stop bone loss by putting in this phosphonate all right so up now that is teriparatide and that is working only for two years what about patients who are partially treated but they still have osteoporosis they have not gotten totally better what to do for them two years of treatment has already done so newer medicine called as dinosumab has started coming in and dinosumab is a newer generation medicine that helps in osteoporosis and the advantage of this medicine being that it has to be taken as one single injection every 6 months and it is seen to be safe for up to 10 years so the only disadvantage of dinosumab is that it does not take care of sarcopenia which means that when you treat osteoporosis with teriparatide along with making the bone strong it also makes the muscle strong whereas dinosumab will only make the muscle strong so you identify a patient if the patient has got osteoporosis you start giving them injections of teriparatide and make sure that they take that for 2 years without break after 1 year you repeat the dexa and you see that is improving if there is a substantial improvement you can stop the teriparatide and shift to dinosumab and keep that one year of teriparatide for a later date if there is not a substantial improvement you continue with the uh, teriparatide okay once you shift to dinosumab you have to give it straight for till the time the bone density value improves and once it is shifted from osteoporosis to osteopenia that is the time you stop all of this and you shift to bisphosphonate now again bisphosphonate you can uh, give safely but you cannot give it unendingly which means you have to give it for a maximum of 4 years after which you need to take a drug interval of 6 months otherwise there are known that you uh, the sub uh, the subtrochanteric fracture of the hip drastically increases on a patient with long term therapy of bisphosphonate that's why you need to have a disease free interval when you're treating a patient with uh, bisphosphonate all right uh, multiple different trials were done and after that uh, it has come that dinosumab has now started emerging as a first line treatment for osteoporosis followed by teriparatide and prevention with the help of uh, bisphosphonate this is the medical basis to it but apart from this there are also uh, environmental fracture that actually influences your bone quality so diet is important just treating with hormones is not important is not enough you have to load yourself with calcium and vitamin d both all right sun bathing is not enough for vitamin d because in bombay and in metro cities the smog is so bad that you will not get that much good rays to develop good vitamin d from your skin so vitamin d is important calcium is important you need to take 1000 mg of calcium every day in a person with diagnosed osteoporosis which is equivalent to 500 mg of elemental calcium never give vitamin d supplement without calcium it is of no use all right but you can give calcium without vitamin d supplements Uh, apart from this you need to be involved in certain physical activities and because not exercising and not being active for long period increases the chance of osteoporosis uh, like muscle bones also become stronger and stay stronger with regular exercises and these exercises should be a loading type of exercises where there is actual load that passes through your body which stimulates the bone production in the areas of the load bearing axis which means something like jumping jogging you know these type of activities uh this is one condition which does not like you to be size 0 which means if you are too slim then you better eat something because it's seen that people who have very less bmi are more more prone to osteoporosis smoking directly affects and causes osteoporosis 
and uh, again alcohol people who are uh, alcoholics or who drink a lot are more prone to getting osteoporosis so essentially the idea is that you should age gracefully you should keep fit by identifying treating identifying and if needed treating osteoporosis and coupling that with endurance building activities exercises and weight training so the take home is that basically make the most of your growing years recognize osteoporosis early institute treatment early you know don't wait for it to happen treat it right in the beginning all right so that's basically